the long space journey of the failed Soviet spacecraft to Venus has come to an end. The Cosmos 482 probe landed on Earth today, May 10th, after orbiting our planet for more than five decades. Its re-entry occurred at 2.24 a.m., Eastern Daylight Time, 6.24 Greenwich Mean Time or 9.24 a.m. Moscow Time over the Indian Ocean west of Jakarta, Indonesia, according to the Russian space agency Roscosmos. Cosmos 482 appears to have landed unharmed in the sea. This is just one estimate, however. Other space agencies and organisations have tracked various locations for the spacecraft's re-entry, from South Asia to the Eastern Pacific Ocean. It's unclear when or if we'll get a definitive answer as to where Cosmos 482 landed. Astronomer Gianluca Massi of the Virtual Telescope Project captured this image of Cosmos 482 during one of its final orbits as it passed over Rome, Italy, just before sunrise on May 10th. The probe appears in the image as a trail entering the field of view from above and moving toward the lower right corner, Massi wrote on his website. The image is a composite of four images, which is why Cosmos 482's trail appears choppy. Earth is not the planet on which Cosmos 482 was originally intended to land. The spacecraft was part of the Soviet Union's Venera program, which sent a fleet of probes to Venus in the 1960s, 1970s and early 1980s. Cosmos 482 was launched toward Earth's sweltering sister planet in 1972, but a problem with its rocket left it stuck in an elliptical orbit around Earth. For the next 53 years, atmospheric drag slowly but steadily pulled the probe apart, leading to today's dramatic end. Most large pieces of space debris, dead satellites and spent rocket bodies, for example, break up during their fiery journeys to Earth, causing artificial meteor showers. However, Cosmos 482 likely landed unscathed today, given that it was designed to withstand a high-speed journey through Venus's thick atmosphere. Cosmos 482 is about 1 metre, 3.3 feet, wide and weighs about 495 kilograms, 1,190 pounds. Had it not disintegrated during re-entry into the atmosphere, it would likely have hit Earth's surface at 240 kilometers per hour, 150 miles per hour, according to Dutch satellite tracker Marco Langbroek. In this scenario, Langbroek wrote in a recent blog post, the kinetic energy upon impact is comparable to that of a large meteorite after ablation between 40 and 55 centimetres, 16 to 22 inches in size. The fall of Cosmos 482 draws attention to the growing problem of space debris on our planet. On average, three large pieces of debris fall to Earth every day, and this number is constantly increasing. According to the European Space Agency, ESA, Earth's orbit hosts approximately 14,240 satellites, of which 11,400 are active. Most of the operational satellites belong to SpaceX's massive Starlink broadband internet constellation, which currently consists of approximately 7,200 satellites and is constantly growing. Other massive constellations are also under construction. For example, Amazon recently launched the first large batch of spacecraft for its Project Kuiper broadband network, which will eventually carry 3,200 satellites if all goes according to plan. Rockets have also launched satellites for two different Chinese mega constellations, each designed to host at least 13,000 spacecraft. As space traffic increases, we expect re-entry frequencies to increase even more in the future, ESA officials wrote in a blog post on Cosmos 482. The risk of injury or property damage from each individual re-entry is minimal, as much of the debris burns up in the air, while the pieces that don't typically fall into the ocean or on uninhabited land. But as re-entry volume increases, the likelihood of a devastating collision increases. There are other potential consequences as well. For example, researchers are drawing attention to the pollution from satellite re-entry, 
which could damage the ozone layer and also affect our planet's climate.